Товарищи красноармейцы и краснофлотцы, командиры политработные, партизаны и партизанки, на вас смотрит весь мир огласилоспособные, уничтожить разбойничьи орды немецких захватчиков. На вас смотрят все народы Европы, временно подпавшие путь. Among those stopping off at Malta prior to the Big Three conferences is W. Averill Harriman, U.S. Ambassador to the Soviets, and five-star General George Marshall with British Field Marshal Wilson. The meeting at war-torn Malta is only preliminary to the final meeting with Marshal Stalin. The Mediterranean Conference of the Allied Military Leaders is held within the stately walls of Montgomery House. Here starts a series of talks that will profoundly influence the diplomatic and political future of the world. Field Marshal Alexander of the Mediterranean Theater and General Brayon Somerville and Admiral King attend. But the meeting really gets down to business at Yalta, former Crimean summer capital of the Tsars. Anthony Eden, Foreign Commissar Molotov and Secretary Statinius are on hand to greet England's Prime Minister. <laughs> Hoping to solve intricate problems of war and peace, President Roosevelt reaches the Yalta meeting, accompanied by his daughter, Mrs. Anna Boniker. These are Army Signal Corps pictures of an historic world meeting that will shape the destiny of future generations. The Summer Palace of Tsar Nicholas II is the setting for Russia's welcome. The conference is to seal Hitler's fate and establish lasting peace and is attended by presidential advisor Harry Hopkins with Mr. Eden. The host arrives, Joseph Stalin, Chairman of the Council of People's Commissars of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Not since the Tehran Conference 14 months ago have the three top executives of Allied strategy and diplomacy met. Meantime, the results of that first meeting were bearing fruit on Germany.